It was a typical day in South Africa back in 2003 when a young man came onto our television screens claiming to have been stolen from his white family and enslaved by a black family in a township nearby. This happened nine years post the apartheid regime. Racial tensions were still very much high in the new South Africa and as you can imagine, this story caused a media uproar. Before we begin, I would like to say I mean no disrespect to the individuals mentioned in this video. Everything mentioned in this video is alleged and has been compiled from sources on the internet. This video is for educational purposes only. Please let's be kind and show respect to one another, especially in the comments section. Happy Sindana was born on the 3rd of June 1985 somewhere near four ways in Joburg. When he was just six years old, he took a walk with his mother and along the way they met a woman named Betty Sindani. Happy's biological mother asked Betty Sindani to keep an eye on Happy while she goes and buys some liquor. She allegedly went into the liquor store and never to be seen again. When Betty reported this to the police, the police told her to look after the child just until the situation is sorted. The situation was never sorted. Betty ended up raising Happy as her own child. Ten years later, Betty unfortunately passed away and Happy was placed in the care of his adoptive grandfather, Guos Sindane. Allegedly, the grandfather did all he could to raise Happy even though they never got along. Happy was a lonely child. He was teased a lot at school by his township classmates for being fair in complexion. He was very much isolated. His biological mother was nowhere to be found. His adoptive mother had passed away. He was left with his grandfather whom he didn't really get along with. Basically, he didn't have anyone. So he invested most of his time looking for his father whom he had made out to be a hero in his mind. His loneliness and his desire to belong, I believe, is what drove him to do what he did next. Uh, this youngster came here accompanied by an adult person, a lady, uh, claiming that uh, he was kidnapped uh, some 12 years back. And that uh, we as the police, we then took the case and then uh, we uh, sent information uh, to the, our uh, crime stop, uh, the Missing Persons Bureau, where we are still awaiting uh, the results of that uh, inquiry as to whether uh, the boy has been reported missing or not. When Happy was 16 years old, he went to the Bronkerspreit police station and told the officers there that he's a white boy that was stolen as a child by the domestic worker and raised in a village called Due Fontaine. He claimed he was starved and made to live rough. He appealed to his real parents to come forward Allegedly, he saw a TV program about babies being stolen from their prams and this triggered why he went public with his search for his father. Happy longed for his father whom he believed was rich and powerful. Back in 2003, this was such a big story and it caused such a stir. As a result, a white couple whose child was missing came forward and claimed Happy as their child. The way this story was so big, there were even talks about Hollywood movie contracts, 
Happy was appearing in a lot of TV and radio interviews after this whole story broke out. After several months of uh, police investigating his case, the court ordered for DNA tests to be done. The results came back and allegedly he was the son of a German immigrant and his domestic worker, which is Happy's biological mother, who goes by the name of Rina Mzaiya, and Happy's real name was Abby Mzaiya, allegedly. When people realized he was not the lost son of a rich Caucasian family stolen by their maid, he was actually the son of the maid. The interviews and movie deals slowly went out the window. Not long after his real identity was revealed, a paint manufacturer which goes by the name of Deluxe did an advert showing Happy's face alongside swatches of colors ranging from light to dark shades of skin with the tagline, any color you can think of. I guess maybe the company thought this would be funny, but Happy was not impressed at all. Understandably so, because to him, the issue of race has had such an impact in his life I guess it was easy for someone else to look at his circumstances as a joke, but for him, it was like a life-changing experience. As a result, Happy took the pain manufacturer to court, suing him for using his picture without his consent, and he actually won the case. The money allegedly went into a trust, and one of the things that Happy did with the money was to erect a tombstone for his adoptive mother, Betty Sindane. The money allegedly didn't last very long as his adoptive family wanted a share of his money. At this stage in his life, Happy was in a child refuge center. He allegedly became closed off and didn't allow anyone to help or comfort him. Allegedly, Happy in his adult life was a loner and had an alcohol addiction or drinking problem. He allegedly didn't have a girlfriend or children. All he did was drink, go home, sleep, wake up and drink some more. He didn't have children or a girlfriend. He was a loner. He'd go out drinking, come back and sleep and then go back to his drinking. He allegedly told a local newspaper that he only drinks when he tries to forget his past which haunts him no matter how much he tries to forget. He was allegedly suicidal. When he was drunk, he would allegedly lie on the road and risk being hit by a car. One day he was run over by a taxi and another car that was behind that taxi. He was on life support and survived that attempt. This left his face disfigured. After a few odd jobs, he found himself back with his adoptive family, a place he tried so hard to run away from. When a reporter asked about Happy in a local tavern, where he usually hung out, he was allegedly known for two things, one being drunk and the other one being famous. In 2013, Happy was allegedly killed by a 50-year-old man. They were fighting over alcohol. He allegedly suffered a fatal hit to the head. And the bloody jacket that bears witness to his terrible death. He died allegedly during a fight over alcohol, an addiction that is fab. One morning near the same tavern in April 2013, his body was found in a ditch. He was allegedly bitten to death at the age of 28 was lying face down there was so much blood too much blood his funeral was all over the news and allegedly his biological and adoptive family fought about who will bury him a funeral company donated a huge memorial gravestone to honor his memory i can't imagine spending your entire life searching for your identity i feel Deeply sorry for Happy. I hope wherever he is, he has found peace and rest that he couldn't find while he was alive. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. 
please like share comment and subscribe and i will see you again on my other video thank you bye